Hello, everyone. Welcome to GGN. This is part six for this news bulletin today. And yeah, I just can't stop. So uh, there may not be any videos tomorrow. I've just maybe just spent tomorrow doing all the links. Uh, but I, I just want to, I'm on a roll here and I just want to keep going. So students who refuse to affirm transgender classmates face punishment. So it says parents across Massachusetts are upset over new rules that would not only allow transgender students to use their restrooms of their choice, which I guess is not that big of a deal, but it could be a little weird for some people, but would also punish students who refuse to affirm or support their transgender classmates. Last week, the Massachusetts Department of Education issued directives for handling transgender students, including allowing them to use bathrooms of their choice or to play on sports teams that correspond to their gender with which they identify. This 11-page directive also urged schools to eliminate gender-based clothing and gender-based activities like having boys and girls line up separately to leave the classroom. Schools will not be required to accept a student's gender identity on face value. Quote, a student who says she is a girl and wishes to be regarded that way throughout the school day and throughout every or almost every other area of her life should be respected and treated like a girl, the guidelines stipulate. So, according to the Department of Education, transgender students are those who assigned or are assigned a birth sex does not match their internalized sense of their gender. They said gender non-conforming students range in the ways in which they identify as male, female, some combination of both or neither. So it goes on here and it says that the school personnel should speak with the student first before discussing a student's gender non-conformity or transgender status with the student's parent or guardian. It says, uh, fundamentally, boys need to be using boys' rooms and girls need to be using girls' rooms, and we base that on their anatomical sex, not some sort of internalized gender identity, said Andrew Beckwith, uh, the Institute's general counsel. This is the Massachusetts Family Institute who denounced the new rules. Another part of the directive that troubles parents deals with students who might feel comfortable uh, having someone of the opposite sex in their locker room or bathroom. This uh, says here, the state takes those students to task noting their discomfort is not a reason to deny access to the transgender student. So this policy allows students to have one identity, gender identity at home and another at school. Any student who refuses to refer to a transgender student by the name or sex they identify with could face punishment. Transgender bill may face vote this week. So it goes on here and it says this bill um, would add gender identity and gender expression in the hate crime section of the Canadian Human Rights Act so it says it's asking they're asking uh, citizens to contact these conservative MPs to basically vote it down. 75 GOP bigwigs signed brief backing of gay marriage. The top Republicans show support before keys of uh, whatever. We're trying to say to the court that we are judicial and political conservatives and is consistent with our values and philosophy for you to overturn Proposition 8, says former Republican National Committee Ken Melman. Well, let's see who's Ken Melman. Okay, from the Jewish Virtual Library, Cal Ken Melman, uh, basically, well, let's see, he's a Jew, but uh, he's also what? I'm not saying that's bad, but I'm just putting it out there that he's a Zionist. He was also on the Council on Foreign Relations, a member, and the National Endowment for Democracy. So the other person that we're, uh, that we're seeing up here is Meg Whitman. So... Uh, Meg Whitman, like a lot of the country, my views have evolved on this uh, from the first day I set foot in Congress. I just think it's the right thing. And let's see, who's Meg Whitman? She's an American business executive. She actually was busted because she never actually voted before she was elected. Uh, she also is a what? She is a billionaire. That's right. She's a billionaire. Net worth of $1.3 billion in 2010. She's worked for all the New World Order companies, including eBay, uh, the Walt Disney Company, HP. Uh, she's also for abortions, and she's against the legalization of marijuana. British Columbia teachers plan to use Day of Pink to teach homosexual indoctrination. The British Columbia Parents and Teachers for Life organization is warning parents that the British Columbia Teachers Federation plans to use the Day of Pink on February 27th to indoctrinate school children with pro-homosexuality message. So it says here the Federation pays lip service to preventing the bullying of all students then goes on to give suggestions for school activities which make crystal clear what they think the objectives of the day ought to be. They include uh, focusing on gender role stereotyping, teasing, and homophobia. 
discussed the harm of homophobic bullying with primary students. So, one example is a poster that says, that's so gay. It says it asks students if they've ever heard the expression on the poster before and asks them to, uh, if this phrase is hurtful or friendly. So, uh, for older primary grades, the Federation suggests that teachers read books that positively portray lesbian and gay characters in your classroom. And they repurpose the Pink Panther cartoon character into a homophobia fighter and look of resources on homosexual websites. For Russia's foreign minister defends anti-gay bill. So kind of interesting. He's got quotes every day. So it goes on here says the foreign minister on Tuesday rejected criticism from the Dutch government and European Union about proposed legislation that would outlaw homosexual propaganda. So he says we don't have a single international common European commitment to allow propaganda of homosexuality. Dutch foreign uh, minister said that discrimination against homosexuals is unacceptable. Gay rights are human rights and Russia must adhere to its international obligations. Then we have Russia's gay propaganda bill fights discrimination, says Lavrov. The foreign minister uh, said Russia's draft law banning homosexual propaganda protects the rights of the majority from a group that wants to promote its own value system. We don't want uh, it says, we don't want to reverse discrimination to occur. It says, when one group of citizens has the right to aggressively forward their values, which differ from those of the majority of the population, and moreover, imposing them on children, Lavrov said. He added that homosexuals can go about their business freely and unpunished, and if it fits within the framework of the obligations of all countries to forbid discrimination because of any given attribute. This article, Gay Marriage is a Minority Issue, says British Judge. A high court judge in Britain has cr uh, criticized the British government for focusing on the minority issue of gay marriage instead of a crisis of family breakdown in the society. So he sits in the family division. He questioned the government's decision to focus on gay marriage, saying it only affects a pretty small number of the population. He accused ministers of wasting time on the issue saying that so much energy has been, and time has been put into this debate for 1% of the population when we have a crisis of the family breakdown. Quote, the breakdown of marriage and its impact on society affects 99.9% .9 of the society. That is where the investment of time and money should be, where we really need to, uh, where we really need the resources, he said. Across the pond, we have Obama places minority status federal benefits at the heart of the anti-DOMA, uh, or def uh, basically Defense of Marriage Act brief. So, completing the turn against traditional marriage, he began more than two years ago. Obama filed a brief asking the Supreme Court to strike down the Federal Defense of Marriage Act, or DOMA. So, the administration has placed a cross to taxpayer subsidized benefits and tax breaks, as well as its belief that homosexuals deserve a special place as an underprivileged minority group at the heart of its legal argument. The 54-page document also claims that justices must give greater deference to homosexuals because gay and lesbian people are a minority group with limited political power. And finishing up with this, compulsive liar is jailed for making her 11th false rape claim against an innocent man who she decided she didn't like anymore. She invented her first sex attack in 2004 when she was 13. Her latest victim was targeted because she didn't like him. After he was held for nine hours, CCTV dis uh, disproved her malicious claim. So she's 22 now, and it says here she's going to be jailed for 16 months after falsely claiming she'd been raped 11 times in 9 years. All right, that's all I have for you. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.